In today's video, I am going to be doing some more audio testing. I am going to be testing the frequency response of a receiver. And it's the same receiver I used in my last audio video. It's a Pioneer SX590, a vintage stereo receiver. I have more receivers, of course, and amplifiers, but they're in the basement and it would be too much of a hassle right now to go and get them up. Um, I made a little sketch here and we can see here this is the audio generator and we're going to be feeding sine waves of different frequencies into the aux input. We don't use the phono input because of the equalization. Equalization is basically, to put it in the simplest terms, manipulation of frequencies. We're not. That's why we're not going to be using that. We want just a straight in and straight out. Um, because the phono, the phono, if you, if, if you have a record player hooked up to the receiver and um, the signal is coming into the amp or the receiver, that signal is going to be manipulated again. There's circuitry in there, but and then once that's equalized, basically, then it's going to come out. But what we're doing, we want to see straight. We have something coming straight into the amp section and going out. How is the frequency response? Um, of course, here, this is the amp or receiver little sketch here I made. And here's the speaker terminals. And right over here is the 8 ohm load resistor. Of course, if your amplifier was, example, for example, 4 ohms, then you'd have to go ahead and use a 4 ohm resistor. Um, I'm going to be testing at an output of 1 watt. So... Um, you don't really don't have to use a high power uh, high power resistor if you had one that just had a couple watts that would do two and here's the AC voltmeter the old um, style with a needle and preferably with a DB scale a decibel scale I don't like using the digital voltmeters for this you can't really see it that good and mostly they don't the frequency response is not that good um, of course, you have to make sure that your frequency response, you got to look at specs of your AC voltmeter, if, you know, if, if it's, uh, if it can handle higher frequencies or a wider frequency range. Like today, I'm going to be testing from, basically from 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is the human uh, hearing range. So it looks like I'm ready to start here. I got everything hooked up. Um. Uh, Right now, my equipment's off. I get all of the equipment off. I'm going to turn it on and then let it warm up for five minutes, which should be enough since it's a solid state equipment. Um, my volume control is all the way down. The output from the audio generator is going to be turned all the way down. All of my con like tone controls, bass, treble, that's going to be in a neutral position. And of course, my function switch on the receiver has to be in the aux basically in the aux position. What I'm going to do first, I'm going to set myself a reference frequency and that's going to be a 1000 hertz sine wave. I'm going to plot that on my paper, make an X, and then I'm going to go ahead and start feeding in other different frequencies. One other thing worth mentioning, of course there's two channels in this receiver, left and right. I'm only going to do one channel for demonstration purposes. Uh, basically what we're looking for here is a flat frequency response and especially from 20 to 20,000 Hertz although this uh, receiver is rated from 10 to 60,000 Hertz um, the reference frequency I'm not sure whether I just mentioned that it's going to be uh, 1,000 Hertz and that's what we're going to go ahead and basically start out with and also the output of the receiver we're basically we're going to use one watt so when our AC voltmeter reads about 2.82 volts in which is when it's hooked up to an 8 ohm load and then I know my receiver is putting out one watt okay another quick mention here the 
scope is hooked up across the other channel, but that's basically just for monitoring purposes that doesn't have to be used. Here we can see the graph paper again. This is a thousand hertz, and if we come over here to the left, we can see here zero dB. That's going to be the reference. And I'm going to make the first X right there. So that's going to be at, basically at one watt. So now I'll go ahead and turn the volume control all the way up and then slowly bring up the audio generator until I'm reading 2.82 volts on the AC voltmeter. Looks like I'm ready. I had to double check everything. Loudness control was still on. Uh, I brought the audio generator amplitude slowly up and again my um, receiver, the volume control is turned it's wide open all the way and I said that if I would have 2.82 volts with an 8 ohm load um, that would be equal to 1 watt which we can see here we're pretty I'm on the 3 volt scale so it's 2. Point let me see, 2.5678, yeah, somewhere around there, but it's not really that usable for me right now because, um, you can see here, it's in between whole numbers of decibels between 1 and 2, so um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring it, um, go ahead and bring this down just a little bit. In fact, I can take it all. I can take it, um, let me turn this down, in fact I can, what I'll go ahead is turn it down to zero here so I can get a easy reading. So right now this is going to be, this is going to be my reference here. It's a 1000 hertz sine wave and that zero right here. So. I'll go ahead and start doing the other frequencies. And right now I am feeding in 500 hertz. You can see we've got a slight increase there. Um, yeah, I would say it's about 0 0.2 dB. It's still well within specs, 500 hertz. I'm going to go ahead and go down, all the way down to 20 hertz. And every time I go ahead and make a Measurement, I'm going to go ahead and plot it on the chart, then I'll go up to the higher frequencies. Here we can see 50 hertz, and we started out at zero, and now I'm, uh, in, I'm almost at minus 0 0.4 dB. And at 20 hertz, you can see here we're already down. This is 1 dB almost 1.6 dBs already down. So right at the border I think of what the specs are supposed to be. So now I am going the other way. This is 5000 Hertz and um, it's pretty close to what it's supposed to be. So I can go ahead and mark that. Then we'll take 10,000 hertz and then 20,000 hertz. Same thing with um, 10,000 hertz. I mean, it's almost, must be like, my, looks like it's uh, 0 0.1 dB down, which really isn't very much of anything. And I'll go ahead and try the 20,000 hertz next. And at 20,000 hertz, we're down 0 0.2 dB. Zero, 0, and there's minus 1, minus 2, and it's about 0.2. Which isn't very far down either. Now I'm going to go to the extremes. 
think the extreme was 60,000 hertz and we'll see what happens there so keep our eye on the meter Oh, that's 60,000 hertz and it is in fact minus one it's like almost about I would say minus 1.3 so I'm gonna write that down not on the chart now we'll try the other extreme which would be 10 Hertz keep our eye on the needle there oh here we go and at 10 Hertz it's actually down I would say minus four about minus 4.4 .4 DB so it's definitely not within specs for whatever reason I don't know whether it's the unit itself or um, maybe this never was up to spec in the first place since it came from the factory or rather none of these units were uh, that I couldn't say I'm probably one of the few people who's ever did this uh, test on this unit. And here's the actual completed chart. Um, we can see here from 20 to 20,000 hertz. I think the most extreme was, I think it was around um, minus 1.6 dB or something like that. The specs state that it should be within minus 1.5 dB so we're actually pretty close and all the way out to 20,000 Hertz here on the left and you can see there was like just a little under 0 dB so relatively flat of course we have to remember if we if I would have spaced these dB markings differently then the response would look a lot flatter so say if I took instead of minus one here I took that minus three minus six minus nine then I'd have a really it would it would look a lot better but basically it's since I magnified everything and right here I could wrote down the responses at the extremes at 60,000 Hertz it was down minus 1.3 DB I think and um, at 10 Hertz it was down minus 4.4 .4 DB somewhere around there of course um, all of this depends upon a lot of different factors it depends upon the accuracy of your signal generator the accuracy of your voltmeter um, the accuracy of your plotting here how accurate how accurate you do that the accuracy of your reading of the uh, pointer on AC voltmeter so there's a lot of different factors in play here and uh, it's probably difficult to get it 100% right on the money so um, basically I just wanted to show how that can be done of course you could get a sheet of this um, semi-log paper and uh, change the plots to take it all the way up to how many Hertz you need in the same way the other way to, to how many Hertz uh, you want to go down of course zero zero Hertz is uh, basically the end so to speak um so basically i think that's um, about all i could think of for now um thanks for watching